So it's my uh, pleasure to join you tonight and uh, talk a little bit about water and uh, hopefully provide some opening remarks that will be set the stage for our, our experts in, in various areas. So in addition to serving on the Board of Supervisors, I have the opportunity to serve on, on other regional boards um, that have given me a, a perspective on, on, a, on a range of water issues. I'm, I'm a member of the Bay Conservation and Development Commission. And uh, as you know, the BCDC is empowered to uh, make sure that we're not filling the bay and provide access to the bay. And we have jurisdiction within 100 feet of the shoreline. Uh, I serve on the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority, as Len Matterman here. Um, the San Francisco Creek is the creek that uh, separates Santa Clara County from San Mateo, uh, uh, from San Mateo County. It's, it's the dividing point. And it's kind of a unique creek because it's, all, it's still all open and natural. And the, uh, the conventional wisdom or the, 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 the lore is that the only reason it's not in a culvert, like all our other creeks, is that it, it separated two counties and the counties couldn't work together, so they just left it. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, I have the privilege to serve on the San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority, which is empowered to raise uh, funds to do title land restoration. So um, through those uh, positions and through my, my work in the county, I have uh, spent a lot of time thinking about water. And what I'd like to do here and briefly um, is to talk about the interrelated issues of sea level rise, flooding, groundwater, and stormwater, and again, we'll hear more from, from, the, from our experts. But uh, again, to set the stage, so sea level rise has been an interest of mine for a couple of years now. Um, and maybe it's helpful just to begin explaining what's happening. Uh, you know, as the climate warms, and we put more and more CO2 into the atmosphere, and we, we capture, we're capturing heat, the climate is warming. And what that means is that water expands, sea, wa sea water expands, which adds to sea level rise, but most importantly, it, um, it melts the ice sheets in green, primarily in Greenland and Antarctica. As that ice melts, it, it, it uh, increases the sea level. And it's hard to kind of comprehend how in the world that could happen. But actually, if all the, mi all the ice melted everywhere, it'd be like 200 feet of sea level rise. So there's a lot of ice out there. Um, and we're not gonna worry about that, at least not in the, in, in the short term. But there is a study that many of you may have heard of, but uh, I do like to remind people of, is that the, the Pacific Institute did a very important study back, way back in 2009, which shows that um, with very substantial sea level rise, approximately 55 inches, San Mateo County turns out to be the most vulnerable county in the state of California to, to sea level rise. And that's really a reflection of our, our, our development patterns. You know, we built aggressively up to the Bay Shore and, and into the Bay with, in such projects with the, like Foster City and the airport and uh, Redwood Shores. So because of those development patterns, we have more property at risk than, than any other county uh, in the state. And we also have about 100,000 people that, you know, live in this potential uh, inundation zone. So it's a big, you know, it's a big issue uh, for, for our county uh, is the, uh, 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 unless we, and it's important we, we think, about, think about it now. Um, so a question that's always asked to me is, well, how much is it gonna rise? You know? And you know, nobody knows, of course, the answer for sure. Um, there's a lot of uh, consensus that we'll see the bay rise by, by, by about three feet sometime before 2100. So whether that's 2070 or 2090 or 2100, uh, no one knows for sure. But there's a fair degree of certainty that we could see the, we'll see the bay rise by three feet by the end of this century. So, you know, another way of thinking about that is, you know, young children being born today are gonna have a bay that's three feet higher, you know, in, in their lifetime. Um, and there's, you know, there are some studies that are even more concerning. Um, James Hansen, who I'm sure that name rings a bell for many, if not all, who really put, see, who put climate change on the map. He went to Congress in, I think, 1988, and he told Congress that, listen, man, our industrial activities are warming the planet and they're gonna have big consequences. Uh, he and 15 of his colleagues recently put out a study uh, postulating that the ice is melting much, much faster than the conventional uh, or the existing studies uh, suggest and that the, the, the rise in sea level could be substantially greater. 
So uh, we know this is coming. You know, it's often referred to as this slow, slow moving emergency, uh, but, it, but it's, coming, it's coming our way. Um, during the presentation tonight, uh, we we're fortunate to have Hillary Papendick, who will talk about some of the things we're doing here in San Mateo County to begin to plan for and think about this, uh, this issue. Um, in particular, she'll talk about our sea level rise vulnerability assessment that's underway. Uh, we've also worked with SFO to uh, do some studying of the uh, shoreline just north of the airport. Um, and most importantly, uh, we've formed an Office of Sustainability, which provides us some, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, the staff and, and, and you know, kind of institutional support to work on this issue for the long run, because this is not the kind of issue you can just solve. You're just going to just have to persistently work on it, and each generation will have to do, do what it can. So that's a quick, uh, a quick preview of uh, uh, on sea level rise. So as I learned about sea level rise, I also learned about flooding. And you know, it turns out that if you put sea level rise aside, uh, we have very significant flood risks here. And it's a really hard thing to think about now, and, you know, after all these years of drought. Uh, of course, we're hearing about El Nino, and so maybe, uh, so, so, so perhaps we're gonna see a really, a really torrential uh, winter season. But um, there are many portions of our bay shore where uh, flooding has occurred and, and will occur again if big storms happen. So uh, probably one of the best examples is the San Francisco Creek. So in 1998, the last big um, El Nino, um, there was substantial flooding there. 1,700 homes and businesses were flooded. It caused about $27 million in damages. And the U.S. Army Corps estimates that if there's a 100-year storm, that's a storm that there's a 1% probability in any given year, that the damages could be 25 times that. So we, we live um, with, with storm risk today. Uh, in fact, the Bay Area Council, uh, who represents the major businesses in the area, recently put out a, a, a report on, on just this topic. And they modeled, they hired, hired experts and modeled what would happen in a so-called 125-year storm. So you know, uh, uh, really the severest of storms. Uh, and, and they estimate that the damage in the Bay Area would be, uh, would be around 10 or $11 billion, you know, the kind of the magnitude that we suffered with uh, Loma Prieta. And of course, once again, San Mateo County, uh, along with Santa Clara County, is the leader in potential, potential damages. Um, so whether we have sea level rise or not, the issue of, of, of flooding is one that uh, we need to address. And, What's, what's really interesting is just, uh, you know, storms now can be so intense that, you know, even in a dry year, like we had last year, uh, the county experienced some, some substantial hardships in our trailer parks you know, in, 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 along the Bay Canal and Redwood Shores, in the Belmont uh, uh, trailer park. So we had those storms in December 2014, and we had a couple hundred people displaced. So that's um, uh, an, an issue that, uh, you know, we, we, we face now. Um, so, flooding sea level rise. Let me turn briefly to groundwater and stormwater. Um, so, as I learned more about sea level rise, I started to hear about this idea of, uh, well, well, if we have sea level rise, the, the salt water could intrude into our groundwater. And then I began to learn, too, more about how historically we've, particularly in Santa Clara County and, in, and, and in, even today in the Central Valley, you know, we've, of course, pumped water out for for, for, for agriculture or for uh, you know, residential and commercial, commercial use. So you know, our, our, our groundwater, you know, we don't think about it very much. You know, we can't see it. And you know, I had no idea until relatively recently there's two substantial groundwater basins in San Mateo County. So the one that's um, uh, of most consequence is in the northern part of the county. It's called the West Side uh, Basin. And uh, that is actually being actively managed today by the North County Cities and by the San Francisco PUC. And they're, they're, they're drawing on that water for um, uh, irrigation, and, and, but they're also trying to think through how to replenish th th those supplies. Then there's another basin, which is called the San Mateo Basin, which stretches um, all the way up uh, to Burlingame, uh, down to the border, and, and south into Santa Clara. And that basin is really kind of a, a mystery. So our, our county is investing some, some efforts into understanding that because we're concerned that with the climate change and with all this pressure for water, that, that that could be drawn upon. 
And then finally, there's the issue of stormwater. And, and on the issue of groundwater, let me say we're, you know, we're very happy to have Garth Hall, who will talk uh, uh, about that. And with the issue of stormwater, uh, you know, stormwater can do some good things. It can help replenish groundwater, uh, but it can do some bad things too. It can it complement, it causes the flooding. Um, it can bring pollutants down into our, uh, our, our fragile ecosystems and our tidal lands. So we're fortunate to have Matt Fabry uh, here to talk about that. So all these things, you know, really interrelate. Um, they're all integrated. They don't respect political boundaries. Um, and it's hard to think about one without thinking about them all together. So the challenge is, is that with climate change, um, y the pressure to figure these things out is, is, is going to grow. I've talked some about, of course, sea level rise and how the, how the climate, uh, the warming climate is affecting that. But as we all know, too, um, you know, as the planet warms, we're going to see less, um, we're going to see less snow in the Sierras. So what's, what does that mean for our, our water supply? And uh, what we'll likely see is more intense storms and we'll see more rain. So what's that going to mean, what's that going to mean for, for, for flooding? Uh, about one third of California's water supply is from the snowpack. So, you know, if, as, that, if as that diminishes, we're going to have to really rethink our water um, delivery processes and think about reuse and recharge. So we're, we're lucky to have uh, Garth here to talk about some of those things. So let me just conclude by um, just pointing out that I think a big challenge we face is that because these issues are interrelated, you know, in a perfect world, we, we would look at them holistically and would have a governance structure to do that successfully. But today we have a lot of government that touches these issues. So we have 20 cities in the county and the county, and many of these issues are fundamentally have land use, uh, land use aspects to them. So if you're going to build a levy, it's a land use issue. city wants to be involved in that. Um, in addition, we do have a county flood control district. Very few people know this. But it has only limited authority and very, and certainly in, in very defined segments for historical re reasons. When it comes to groundwater, you know, we have this basin in the north governed by um, uh, the northern cities and by the SFPUC. And down in the south, we really don't have a governance structure, but we do have BASQUA. I always forget the, exactly what BASQUA means. The, uh, the uh, uh, Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency, who uh, represents 24 cities and water districts and has uh, quite a bit of expertise in groundwater. So they're looking at this in addition to the county. Then when we think of stormwater, um, by law, all the cities have to meet certain stormwater uh, requirements. Um, but to kind of facilitate that process, um, our, our, city, our Association of City and County Governments, called CCAG, and with Matt Fabry's help, you know, tries to bring some expertise to bear on, on a more regional basis. So, you know, this kind of just gives you a flavor. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of government, and these things are interrelated. So, you know, my hope, you know, over the long term is that, you know, firstly, certainly in the short term, we're going to have to collaborate more than we ever have on these issues. It's really hard to deal with them city by city or, or agency by agency, so the need for collaboration is great. And I think, you know, ultimately, um, you know, I think we're going to, to be most successful, we're going to have to move into some kind of integrated, you know, uh, entity that, that, you know, can, can, can address the challenge which really, which really is increasing every day with, with the climate change. So. Um, uh, again, we're really fortunate to have some speakers that can provide some uh, real detail to some of the things I said, and um, I, I appreciate your, uh, your time and attention. Thank you.